So I'd like to call this meeting. Recording in progress. Oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, I'd like to call this meeting of the Woodstock Village Trustees to order on Wednesday, November 9th at 6.30. Um, the first item on our agenda is a uh, citizens' comments. Are there any citizens' comments today? No? Okay. Seeing as there are none, we'll move on to additions and deletions from the posted agenda. Are there any additions or deletions? Nope. Moving on, we'll go to the manager's report. Tom, what's going on? Um, initially, this meeting, <coughs> we had hoped to present the full uh, fiscal year 24 budget, but um, both the um, finance committee and the staff thought that we needed to wait a week or so. And, uh, John's here to speak about that, and he's on the agenda at one point. Uh, but I you know, just wanted to let everybody know that. Um, during the last few weeks, I don't know if you folks have noticed, but there's been a number of boards, approximately 70 boards we placed on the sidewalk on the Elm Street Bridge. Nice. Uh, there was a few rotten ones, and once the guys got into it, they found many rotten ones. And we placed a lot of them. <coughs> Um, we've had a, uh, a resignation in the Lister's office. Uh, Trina Tolliver uh, is, uh, has resigned. Her last day was uh, this past Friday, November 4th. This morning, uh, uh, I made a verbal offer to a uh, public works uh, director candidate, and he's accepted the offer. And uh, verbally, I'm waiting for a uh, signed uh, return of the letter, acceptance letter. Uh, or offer letter, and uh, uh, you know we uh, we struggled to get a really good candidate, and we waited, and, uh, and it worked out. So uh, once he comes on board, I think I'll probably have him come to uh, trustees meeting and meet everybody. But uh, I'm hopeful that we'll see him on the job by the end of this month. Oh, that's great. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's, <clears throat> that's all I have. Are there any questions for Tom? I have a question. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I do have something else. Go ahead, John. No, no, you go. No, 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 no. You ask your question. Okay. It's a totally different topic. It's, it's been, it was brought to my attention, and I looked around, um, and I noticed the same thing. We have these really beautiful trash disposals in the village. Um, and at this point, through the whole summer, spring and summer, they um, at this point, they really need to be cleaned. Oh, yeah? Yeah, especially the tops of them. <clears throat> The, you know, stuff is just kind of baked on, and uh, before it gets too cold, uh, I don't know if our someone in our maintenance department could could do that. But uh, we'll take a look at it. We'll would you see take what a look? Do. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think just you know, washing them down might do it. But, mm -hmm. uh, you think more so on the exterior versus the interior? Yes. I mean, there might be some that are really bad inside too. Oh, they're gross inside too. I, yeah, I, I didn't really look inside as much. But the, the exterior, especially the tops. All right. Thank you. Yes. Any other questions or comments from trustees? You know, I, I forgot the financial thing. Oh, yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. So I passed out a, uh, <clears throat> a little financial statement to everybody. And... Um, Basically, what this is saying is that the village in fiscal year 22 had a $33,104 dollars um, surplus, and um, you can see that that's the third uh, amount on this statement. But to explain them a little bit more how that came about, if you look up above. The first bold number is $9,321, and that was uh, revenues that were received over budget. Um, and then there was uh, $23,783 underspent budget. So you combine those two and you come up with $33,104. Um, unfortunately, you know, there was a unassigned uh, fund balance of about $130,000. So that uh, $33,000 surplus 
um, decreased that to $97,445. And the information below is just some of the uh, contributing factors uh, <clears throat> uh, that I, I think are pretty self-explanatory. Some items were uh, underspent, overspent, um, and uh, that all contributed to um, getting to the uh, net operation gain of uh, 33,104. And this is really the information that uh, Sarah Macy uh, helped generate. Some time ago, I mentioned uh, you know the work that she'd been doing, and she had uh, come up with some uh, uh, some numbers, some new numbers, and um, um, and uh, the trustees were interested in hearing her report it out. But uh, she really was not uh, wanted. BLCT does does want her to do that kind of stuff. You know, come to. Um, trustees and, and select board meetings. So um, I did it in her stead. Questions? <clears throat> so if I understood you correctly, Tom, you said that the surplus was applied against the deficit that we had going into the fiscal year. Is that correct? Well, yes. In other words, yeah, it reduces, but yeah. Okay, so I also recall that we had, uh, I thought we had spent the first half of our ARPA funds mm -hmm. to reduce that deficit, which would be considerably more than that. That's all news to me. Yeah, we, the first half <clears throat> was supposed to go to cover it, and then we were going to use part of the ARPA that we received in August was going to pay that down. Uh, or pay it off, and then we were, we should have a little bit of ARPA money left over. But no, over no, a little more than a little. Yeah, the, the first half. I mean, ARPA money was about two hundred and fifty <coughs> something thousand dollars, right. yes, and so. um, we were going to apply about one hundred and thirty to the deficit that we were facing. Yeah, but we had the first amount in the bank, and then we knew that we would yes. cover the rest with yeah. Well, first so amount did, covered the covered. When did the trustees well, decide just about to do that? that? Uh, in March, I believe, when we found out about the deficit. So once we found out about the deficit, I think it was about a month <coughs> later. Yeah. Yeah. When we figured, when we made that decision. It would be in minutes. I, I, so this is news to me that we would that this that this would is be that, applied. Is that large? Uh, well, no, not that. No, no, we knew about that in March, but we specifically designated the ARPA funds to cover that, so that. So either there's ARPA funds left. To the tune of this thirty-three thousand, or this budget surplus still exists. So that's kind of what it's just top of my head. It sounds like. Well, yeah. if you're going to may take, I ask a question? If you're going to hold, hold on a second, wait. I want to let Tom half of two hundred fifty-six thousand. Then you're not going to have a deficit because you really, at this point, only have ninety-seven thousand. So the question is, has that ARPA money been? Allocated as we asked for it. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's do that first. <laughs> yeah, and my suggestion is is to only do it in the amount of ninety seven. Why would you want to do more? Yes. Mm, I wouldn't. <clears throat> I thought we'd already used it. Yes. I thought we had part of it, and then we had to wait for the yes. get an additional part to finish well, it off. Yeah, it, all, it was almost. Yeah, it was close. Yeah, yeah but that was, yeah. So we had to. I think it was like <clears throat> it was a small amount, but we knew we had to wait till August to get yeah, the rest of the money. Get the rest of the money. So between the first and second payment of ARPA would cover the 130, but since it's only 97,445, just the first part. So, so if we could find out exactly what uh, the village ARPA funds are, where they would stand now, that would be great. Yeah. So uh, maybe you want to entertain Jill's question before you do anything, but I suggest you make a new motion. Or do you want to wait? Well, let's. I want to make. You could make the motion that if any of the ARPA funds have not been applied, then you apply them to reduce the <clears> deficit <throat> to zero. But also, but I think want we, to explain if you decide to do that, uh, you, you, there's a process. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to use that. <clears throat> May I ask my question? Do it this point, honestly, in the, in the past tense. I know I would do it in a future tense, 
because we could use it to uh, contribute to capital. We could use it to pay payroll. Yeah. But uh, I guess we'll have to go into fiscal year 23 in a deficit and then spend the ARPA funds for some other category of operational expense. And then at the end of 23, you're going to come out with a zero or maybe something different. But at least you would start. Uh, well, we're halfway, almost halfway into the year. So does what I'm saying making any sense to you? Sorry. May I ask a question yeah. which might, that might help this? Yeah, Jill, now you can. Okay, so you appointed a finance committee to help with financial matters. The finance committee has not discussed this. What you might want to do is make a motion to refer this to the finance committee, allow us to take some time to look at it, and then come to the next board meeting with a recommendation. I don't believe anything has to be done tonight. It can just be taken as information. Um, yeah, I don't have any objection to another group no. weighing in. However, I still would like to get clarification. Yes. It doesn't have to be tonight. No. You know, if you can get Sarah or Zoe or whoever can give us the trustees' clarification on exactly what has transpired since what we had previously decided to do with the ARPA funds and how much exactly is left in the village, that would be helpful for us to make that decision and no problem sharing with the Finance Committee yeah. to look at the same thing. Well, in fact, the Finance Committee is, in the format that we're preparing to come to you with in future weeks, is going to include all of these extra amounts. Okay. Including carry forward deficits and ARPA funding so that you have a full, so that you can do what you did in yeah. March and you can do what you're thinking about now and you can do this going yeah. forward. So well, the one of the clarifications, and you got, you all can figure it out, is that in March we designated it. Like, right. so we've already had this vote. Like we, right. the, yeah. so if there needs to be a change in how that money is designated, we have to make a re, we have to right. get, gather that information and vote on that again because. We'll try to make that clear in the, in the Okay. We can decide how to do that. Yeah. Okay. That's going to be an easy thing to determine, and I can hopefully yeah. send that out an email to everybody tomorrow. That'd be that pretty great. Explains where, yeah. where we are because I don't think that's going to be used, to the best of my knowledge, because that would have appeared on this. I mean, that's yes. huge. Yeah. Yes, that's a huge. But if I can just make a quick comment, I also think that what Tom was saying. And can you tell? Sorry, just for the yes. recording. Can you tell everybody your name? John Spector from Woodstock. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Tom, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought you might also be saying that the ARPA funds can be used for certain purposes and not others. And the, in fact... Yeah. There are very few strings. There's almost no strings. <clears throat> so, well, you can't just say, we're going to use it to reduce a, a surplus. You have to well, identify right. yeah. line items. That but we ran that, around. at the time, we ran that by BLCT, and they said that that was a fine use, of, that we were allowed <clears throat> to spend ARPA funds that way. Oh, okay. So, but it sounded like yeah. Thomas <clears throat> not aware of their advice. No, that's okay. Oh, no, no, no. Or, or, he wasn't here or, months ago, so. <laughs> or that their advice was not <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm not discounting okay, their advice. What I'm saying is there's a mechanism oh, do, for right. doing it. You just yeah, don't sorry. say, we'll, we'll just eliminate this uh, deficit. I don't think that uh, is an appropriate or a legal use of the funds. It, it's a legal use. We asked VLCT. We you ran it. We, yeah. we mean, had Katie, what's her name? Most, yeah, I can agree, agree with you. I, okay, but, 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 okay, I'm but happy to, I'm I'm happy to send you the information. Follow the mechanism. You have oh, to yeah. Allocate it towards expenses. You just mm -hmm. don't say that. Right. We reduce, we, we eliminate the budget. Boom. I I or know, but we, deficit. and we'll find that we'll find the minutes so that everybody's on the same page. But we we did that already. We asked the question. We said, is this appropriate? We voted on it mm -hmm. for the allocation to cover, to cover the the hundred and thirty thousand dollar deficit that we yeah. were made aware of in March. Yeah, but I think what you missed was that fine point that I'm giving you now is there's a mechanism for doing that and that's what we have to for report on. yeah yeah there's a there's a uh, web portal i believe that you go into and you say these are the arpa funds this is what we're that's what we've used it for that was things yep. that uh the previous administration set up i think david it's not set up yet. i thought you did that yeah, we can't do it well the oh. treasury is closed down their help desk we have not been able to report that yet. okay but you tried to do it 
Okay. Okay. And that's right. You had the phone calls with Treasury on that. But didn't they say you were fine? What, remind me of where we left off with that. Because they were like, we know that you need to do this. We know that this was a requirement. Yeah. And then Treasury shut down their help desk. Well, that's. So now there's no more. Okay. So. I don't know what to do. That's. No, there's still a way to do it. You, there can, you can get into their sites. We've, I've been talking to a couple of people okay. about this. That that's what they do. There's okay. a woman at uh, BLCT. She's okay. special. Her whole purpose is to deal with ARPA and other federal funds. And is that K D B yeah. something? And she said, it can be done. So we'll have to Sorry, I didn't mean to raise this can over Oh, no, this is all good information. These yeah, are all yeah, discussions yeah. we need to yeah. have. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so let's get all those questions answered before we make any sort of vote or anything. Well, I think we have to wait till the finance comes in. Yeah. You're going to present gonna ideas. Present this. You'll see this number. In, you'll see the 130,000 okay. and the 97,000 in the numbers that we present. You'll okay. see the ARPA funds. And then you'll see the, and then we'll see, will you, well, I'll ask you that next month. No, we don't need to get into that yet. Okay. Uh, trustees, any other questions but, uh, about uh, this? One, one other question. Well, yeah. it's not exactly about this, but we didn't get a financial report this month. Yeah. So I'm wondering this why. This whole meeting was supposed to be about finances, so we didn't prepare one. Hmm. Initially, the finance committee was going to go over Everything, everything. <clears throat> and now let's move back to next month. Okay. Uh, the finance committee has been in existence how long, John? Uh, like six months or three months or <laughs> four months? Okay, so we're just you're just getting off the ground, and what you do is going to help us. And uh, I think that's, we're, we're about to, yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we're yeah, they're on the agenda ready. later. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I just wanted yeah. to recognize that. Okay, Tom, do you have anything else? I don't. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so next is the police chief's report. Robbie, come on up. Tell us what's going on. Okay. So the Halloween went well. We didn't have any problems. There was a really good crowd out there for the trick or treaters. Um, we assisted with the Halloween parade, the elementary school. Well, I'll make a request as a, a Zoom listener. Could you come up to the oh, could yeah. speakers come to the table, please? Thank you. Thanks. Um, so with Thanksgiving, food drive is coming up November 16th. I'm going to do a stuff a cruiser event on the green like we did last year. Um, last year we did about 405 pounds of food and $96 in cash, so we'd like to surpass that. What's that date? <clears throat> November 16th is a Wednesday, uh, 7.30 to 9.30. Veterans Day Parade is coming up on Friday. It starts at uh, about 10.50, so we'll be briefly shutting down the road while the uh, Legion <clears throat> marches down from the Legion Hall to the memorial by the courthouse. Um, turkey Trot is also coming up. That's going to be on Thanksgiving Day. Expect traffic delays there. Uh, I think the race starts at about 8.30, 9? No, 10. 10. The race itself? I think yeah. so. We're usually done by 11.30 in any case. And the roads are opened up intermittently, so it won't be a complete shutdown. Um, we hosted our open house at the Emergency Services Building. Um, that, that went well. That was in October. And um, we assisted the courthouse staff with some uh, active shooter training in October. The winter parking ban is coming up on November 15th. Just a reminder to everybody, we've started to put flyers out uh, for the cars parked overnight for that. Uh, <clears throat> parking. Park, October was a good month for parking. Um, we had $22,815.83 in uh, revenues for the parking meters uh, compared to October 2021, which is also a good year, but that was uh, 21852 so almost $1,000 more than last year. Oh. Um, the, all of the, between the kiosk meters and park multiple was pretty evenly split. So that's my report. And the meters are continuing to yep. work well at They kiosks. still work well, it's functioning properly. <clears throat> Uh, how are you, how, uh, I noticed, you know, you've got a, a speed thing. 
um, by Tribu Park. Yep. Have you looked at any data from it? So that particular machine does not actually collect data. Oh, it's just okay. Okay. Yeah, right. having data on that. And I haven't forgotten about you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, just curious. Yeah, I, I wish it did, but if it doesn't. Okay. I have a very small question I've been dying to ask for a long time. How do the parking uh, people that police the, the meters know that it's park mobile and that it's paid? Does the meter show that somehow? I just always wonder how it works. So, uh, so they have a, a, a smartphone that has an app that gives us a back end into the park mobile system. Yeah. And it displays all of the um, license plates that have been paid in park mobile and the kiosks. They're both tied into the same app. Cool. Uh, and then, so that's how they do it. I was wondering. Yeah. <laughs> that's doesn't show on the, on the meter. Sometimes there's a little bit of a latency issue in terms of because of our connectivity here in the village. Uh, there's a little bit of a delay in the reporting from either the app or the kiosk to the, the back end system. Uh, once in a great while, especially during full age when there's a lot of people using cell phones, mm -hmm. that's when we've had the most latency issue. But we're usually able to um, you know, work it out with anybody that has an issue. Are there any questions from the trustees for Robbie? No? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Robbie. Moving right along, uh, we're moving to permits. The first one is a Veterans Day permit from the American Legion Post. Is there anybody here to speak on that? I'm the Legion. Okay, so awesome. It. It's, everything is going to uh, be as normal as our incentives every year. And this year, again, as I mentioned earlier, they'll step off at 1050. Please, please could you ask yeah. to speak at March up, the They'll step off at 1050, march down to the courthouse, have the ceremony, and they're usually, like I said, they're back, uh, back to the Legion Hall by 1130. Okay. Uh, does anybody have any questions, trustees, questions or comments? Okay. Uh, are there any uh Public comment on the Veterans Parade for next year, not this year, next year. Okay. Um, is there, uh, I'll entertain a motion. I move that we accept the parade permit uh, as received. Is there a second? I second. Brenda seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next permit is the Memorial Day Trade permit, also from the American Legion Post. Would, Robbie, would you like to come up and speak to that one too? I haven't seen the uh, the permit that was submitted, but I have also not heard that there's going to be any changes to it. And that particular parade, as well, know, uh, starts by the elementary school, goes down around uh, Central Street, around Tribo, down Pleasant to Elm, over the bridge, up uh, River Street by the cemetery, over the covered bridge. And then back to uh, the final stop, I believe, is the elementary school. There, that's where they end up. Okay. Yeah, there's, there's no change. There's no change. There's, there's no that's, change. That's how it written. runs, and it'll, it'll be fine. Okay. Yeah. I move that we accept the Memorial Day parade from this 2023. Show River Street, Sorry, up, Jerry. What? Well, the diagram doesn't show him going to River Street. This goes across the Elm and back to the Green and really good. Minor point, I guess. But the illustration of the application doesn't show going over. The bridge to River Street. The diagram. Uh, that's because that's the Memorial Day parade. No, that is the Memorial no, Day it's parade. The, it's the, they they yeah, changed okay. it one year. Maybe it, it might have been last year. I'm trying to recall. Uh, yeah, it went down River last year. Yeah, and so but one year they changed it, and then they changed it back. So I don't know. Maybe they submitted it. The way it's here, it's changed back. Yeah, this one doesn't go down River. Correct. It does not go down River in writing or in or on the map yeah so uh, i move that we accept it as presented okay uh, are there any questions or comments for robbie about it i'll work with the legion we'll work it out okay are there any public comments now i will entertain a motion i move that we accept the permit for the uh, legion memorial day parade on may 27 2023 as uh, presented in their the written permit. Is there a second? I second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next permit is an East End Park application. Is there anybody here to speak to that? Okay. 
Brittany, did you hear anything from the person about them not being able to come? Nope. Okay. Um, since they're not here and they don't have a date on the event, <laughs> um, can you let them know that we're just going to, um, my recommendation would be to table this until next month when somebody can be here and give us complete information. <clears throat> This is Monday, Sept. Yeah, Monday, yeah. September. Uh, that's all that we have. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so next year. And did we receive the hundred dollar application fee? We yeah. did receive that. So that we received that, but not the balance of what uh, they would owe at the time if we. Uh, yeah, but it, we don't have the date, and no one's here. So. Yeah. I feel like I can't make well, a decision. Need, on no, I agree. Yeah. We have to have a date. Okay. Yes. Um. So I would make a motion to table this application um, until our next meeting on December. What day is that? Second Tuesday. Second. Does anybody know what the? You don't have to motion. No. 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 It's no motion. Okay. I would just get a postponement. Okay. But somebody has to get in touch with her. Yes, Brittany. Can you get in touch with her and uh, tell her we need complete information and yeah. somebody needs to be at the meeting in December, please. Okay. okay. And that she can do it by Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like she's in California. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments on this, trustees? Or public? Okay. Well, let's move on to old business. Old business. Uh, first item on the agenda is ordinance uh, for adoption of temporary structures in the in Tribute Park. Um, Brittany has provided us with uh, some updates here. Thank you, Tom, for getting in touch with the lawyers um, who took my messy first draft and made it fancy and legal. Um, so you have uh, two things here. It took the original and shows you the edits on it. This is all part of the pack. Um, and I'll remind anybody here or at home that you can, that this will be online so that you can see exactly um, what we're voting on here. So the changes that were made to um, the ordinance 9101 under chapter one of the village ordinance is uh, there is an addition of number seven that and it's a definition that says Tribu Park means the park land between Central Street and Pleasant Street beginning at the intersection. Oh, that's these extra things I gave oh, you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, intersection of Central and Pleasant Street and extending to the property line abutting 42 Central Street. Number eight adds structure means an assembly or materials for occupancy or use. It also adds number nine, sign, shall have the meaning and definitions set forth in the village of Woodstock zoning regulations and shall include without limitation banner signs, business signs, community signs, and instructional signs, all as defined in said regulations. Um, and then we added uh, section 9403 to that chapter one, and it reads temporary structures or signs in Tribu Park. And it reads, no temporary structures or signs included but not limited to banners, tables, tents, or stages shall be placed in or on the ground, the trees, or existing permanent structures located at Tribu Park without a permit issued by the village trustees or their designee, which may include reasonable conditions and safeguards. Uh, trustees, do you have questions or comments on this? I do. Yes. Um, sorry. <clears throat> so this issue came out of Tribu Park and some. Um, original person was concerned about it and we have a big discussion about basketball ones. So is this just a tribute park ordinance? Yes. All right. And does, is, are we concerned about having similar ordinances in the other six parks in the town and village? Is this, I mean, is, each park has its own ordinance. The green has to have permits for, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. I just wonder whether it should be an all-encompassing permit. This is way after the fact, and I'm sorry this is the last minute, but I haven't been in on the discussion. Um, so, do we need similar ordinances for all the other parks, or one for all the parks? Does this apply to all the parks or just Tribute Park? Signs in Tribute Park. Yes, yeah, I'm saying. Park. I sh I, my point is, should it just should it be applying to other parks other than Tribute? Park? I mean, my understanding when we had the previous discussion was that 
this, we decided on this for Tribute Park because there is a sight line issue right. when you're on Pleasant or okay. Central to look across. Okay. We can certainly investigate it. We can. Okay, I don't need to make a fuss about it. It just seems that we have seven parks with seven different needs, and we have seven different ordinances, one for each park. So maybe this is something to consider down the road. This is great by me. I don't have a problem with it. Okay. I'm happy to entertain <clears throat> rules for other parks. I'm going to dig up a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> you are welcome to head that up, Bill. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, I'll shut up. <laughs> uh, are there any questions or comments from, uh, um, from anybody attending? No one online. Okay. Um, in that case, I would entertain a motion to approve this uh, updated ordinance. I move that we approve the updated ordinance that you just read to us. Okay. Is there a, okay? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. And then we all have to sign. Yes. Do you want it to be that one? Oh. Uh, motion carries, and we will all sign this. Is there anything else we need to do? So we're all signing this? Uh, it has to be uh, published. Uh, okay. Either, uh, actually, this one will probably publish it in whole. Yeah, you, have, you can come up with a concise summary, but this is so short, we just publish the whole thing. Okay. <clears throat> so I can't remember if it's going to have to look at the statute. And then? And then there's a Charlie needs to 60 sign day it. period. That could be appealed and um, okay. and then it becomes effective. Okay. So we just need to get Gabe's signature on this then. You don't need. You, you have four you're good. Okay. Well can yeah, I give that to you then? Yeah. 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 Sure. Thank you, sir. Moving on. Uh, update on tree removal at twenty six Pleasant Street. Is there anyone here to speak to the tree removal <clears throat> request from last month on twenty six? Pleasant Street. I'm talking to the owner today and he doesn't know what's going on. So are we expecting a report back from him or what's the... Uh, last month when he came to us, we asked him some questions, um, some specific questions. He was going to go back and talk to the engineers he was working with and come back to us this month. Okay, was that communicated to him? Because it didn't sound like from my discussion with him that he was clear on We discussed it in the meeting. Yeah, it yeah, was. Yeah. Very clear. <clears throat> I wasn't here, so forget it. Okay, moving on. Uh, since he's not here, we'll yeah. table it until <clears throat> he's available. Yes, I would say McCoy, but it's McCoy when you say it quickly. Okay. Next <clears throat> item on the agenda is uh, a nine one E nine one one presentation. David, are you doing that for us? Can you come on up and introduce yourself to us for the record? I'm David Green here, fire chief. There you go. In front of that, make sure you're in the camera. Yep. Everybody and, home uh, wants to Pete see. Fellows is also here from okay. the River as uh, Should we have any follow up questions or anything I can answer? Okay. <clears throat> okay, David, tell us all about E911. Yeah, so uh, the village is one out of numbers. Okay. Um, and we are, every new building that we have to put a 911 number to or make a change on an existing building mm -hmm. is being illegally numbered per state standards. Because in 2015 or 9, I think it was. They adopted legislation that said, this is the system you're going to use, uh, mileage-based, and uh, the village has been resistant to that um, since then. And while they were technically grandfathered, um, Jeff and I had a conversation earlier this spring where they had attached a bill to some of the legislation <coughs> to say, if you're not, if you don't do the current adopted standard, you may not receive grants. And I have since found out that they took that out this year. So it wasn't last year and they moved forward. It may come back again, I do not know. But anyways, every time I put one of these numbers in, I get a call from the state of Vermont saying, nope, we're not accepting it, doesn't need standards, doesn't work. Um, you can't do the half, you can't do the A, B, C, which we're doing. They're always like, you need to do something. So I'm constantly fighting with them. 
So not only are we out of numbers, but also you take a downtown block building, uh, they aren't assigned suites. So you have multiple units that may have an address of 64, and the whole building is known as 64. So Joe Smith on the third floor is 64 you know, Central Street, and the guy on the first floor is 64 Central Street, which may be apartments upstairs, businesses downstairs, uh, it's just, there's a lot of problems in the village. So I am here to ask again that we adopt the current standards and bring the village into the, those standards. Okay. Um, Pete, would you like to, uh, whoever there, or is it Tyler, Pete, both of you? Pete, Bill, oh, Tyler is here. <laughs> Whoever's our expert. I mean, this, so um, for those of you who don't have the packet or everybody here at the table, you have in your packet a letter from E911 that was sent to the trustees at the end of the month, letting us know that we were out of compliance, um, along with uh, an email uh, from 2018 about this issue. Um, I was, we were also provided with, uh, via email, a couple of other emails between David and a couple of other people about being out of compliance. Um, and so that's where we are now. Peter or Tyler, do you want to speak a little bit more about this process? Okay. Uh, well, oh, there we go. Did we get them? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Hi, sorry uh, I was late. I had to put the kids to bed. <laughs> um, yes. So um, could you talk to us? Um, I've, we've, uh, the trustees have the letter, and we've, um, and I saw this email from Peter Fellows about uh, the process. Could you talk to us a little bit more about this process and why it's recommended and what happens if we choose not to adopt it. All for us. Oops. Okay, I think we've lost time. I think I got booted there temporarily. Okay. Okay. Um, as far as the, uh, the process goes, there's sort of a few ways. Mm. Where you plan everything and do it all at once. Um, or you can do the uh, few streets here and there, and work your way across. Um, do it slowly over time, uh, and that's really sort of the preference. But uh, as you know, the majority of the town has been done uh, already. Uh, I believe it was around 2012-ish, 2011-2012. Uh, each address needed to be uh, any sort of street name adjustments. Uh, uh, we would get those approved. Um, Letters would be mailed out to those homeowners so they could participate uh, if they would so choose and said sort of discussions in a normal process. Uh, and once everything's sort of set in stone, uh, uh, normally we would have a sort of six to eight week. Activity. It allows for a few things to sort of flow in to sort of eliminate issues. Um, the two biggest ones would be sort of USPS. Uh, a lot of stuff obviously runs off the mail and it usually takes them around two to three weeks to sort of get their stuff uh, updated and get the ball rolling with them. Uh, as far as 911 goes, that's probably the least of anyone's concern. Uh, and it will flow directly to the 911 center 
same day. Um, Tyler, I think we keep losing you. Yeah, let me uh, try move into a different spot. Sorry, apologies. <clears throat> I don't know if you can still hear me. It's that way it uh, might have better internet. Okay. Thanks for uh, setting us up the time to sort of discuss it, too. Uh, and our office seemed to think of it a very important issue, of course. Tyler, can you, are you still there? Uh, David, can you take over more? Can I ask a question before you continue? Uh, I'm going to just do this two meetings ago when David first brought to our attention. He says, do it all at once or slowly over time. Exactly what? Exactly what are we doing? We're changing the numbers of every house in town or just ones like the, the building. Back the village. And I mean, excuse yeah. me, the village, right. Yes. But um, uh, like the apartment, you said this all 60 central and has different apartments. Is that what's going to change, or is everybody's entire town's village is going to change their address? Yep, so everybody's house number would okay. change because it's a mileage based uh, right. numbering system. All right, so instead of 20, it would be 2100 or 2001 or something? Uh, like maybe on Route 4 or the main yeah. street, you might get that, but most of them will be less than, you know, four digits. Because the, the streets are short here in the village. I just want to make sure I understand. And I noticed in here um, where it lays out the the process, it talked about some of our streets sort of start and stop. Would there be any street name changes? So um, potentially, yes. Okay. Particularly Route 4 uh, because, as you know, it has, I think, seven different names going down it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's actually one of the streets I wanted to talk to you about is we – Tyler and I try to assign a number to a building, and um, I always give the option, if it makes sense, to the homeowner, would you like the new mileage-based number? Mm -hmm. So you'll go, you know, 2, 4, 6, 600, 8, 10, 12, which is still ridiculous, but they won't have to change yeah. in the future. And this gentleman wanted to do that, but he was on Route 4, so we didn't know how the roads would play out in the end. Okay. So whether you carry it all the way from, you know, Cumbies where uh, Woodstock Road and goes all the way down. So th those are the issues that we're facing. Okay. So it's not just numbers, it's street names. As well. Yes. Potentially. Yes. Or is there any other street? One, one thing to know as well is back in 2011, 2012, before I was working here, uh, a lot of the streets that they did numbering for was an assumption that the village was going to change at the time as well. And so all of the changes in the, in the village are not going to impact anything whatsoever in the town. It would only impact the village. So a lot of them uh, on the continuous <clears throat> roads from the village to the town it's two, four, six, eight, ten, and then all of a sudden it's 450, 475. Okay. Uh, so those ones would be left as is. Okay. And can you tell me how many municipalities have switched over to E911 in Vermont? Do you have a sense? Uh, as far as readdressing wise? Yes. Uh, since I've been here, <laughs> Um, I came on board right after the Woodstock did the town, mm -hmm. and since then, uh, the town of Alberg, uh, which was roughly 2,000 homes, there was uh, about one-third to one, uh, give or take about a third of the town of Milton, uh, which was maybe 
five ish, 500 homes, maybe. Um, there was about a third of the town of Stowe, uh, which again was maybe 500 or so total addresses impacted. Most of those were condos. Um, there was the entire town of Wells in Rutland County, which was, I believe, around 1,200 or so houses. Uh, and most recently was this year we re redid around 500 houses in the town of Springfield. And theirs was a lot more difficult because they had Gosh, they must have had 40 or so road name changes they needed to do. They had du duplicates and triplicates and, and of like 10 different streets. They had three main streets. They had three school streets. Um, so Springfield was the most recent one. Um, and Springfield's actually going to be doing about another three to 400 or so in around January. Uh, I'd say on average, it's about one-ish town a year or every other year. Uh, at the moment, there's around 200 to 210 towns of the 250 or so that are on this 1,000-based system. Of that, uh, 40 or so towns, uh, there's around 20 or so that are sort of grandfathered in, sort of like the village Woodstock. Um, it's around 20 that has a system, but it's likely going to fail at some point just because of the nature of how they did their, their numbering. Does the, the 20 or so that you say are probably going to fail, that's the... No, he said 20 of them are grandfathered in. Like yeah, and then you said... Yeah another 20 have a system that's going to fail? Yeah, so back when they originally did the numbering, uh, they let towns sort of pick their increment. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the sort of city center or village center areas, um, some other similar villages like Waterbury Village, uh, those were grandfathered in at the time. Uh, so two, four, six, eight, ten. Those are likely bound to fail, and in Woodstock we've been seeing that as of lately, uh, where, you know, we run out of numbers. Um, but some of these other towns like uh, Chelsea and Tunbridge and, and uh, Ludlow, they're, they're using a, a system that's uh, standardized, but it's a, it's a much larger increment. They're using 10-foot system or a, or a 50-foot system. Whereas in, you know, grandfather village uh, of Woodstock, a certain road could be based on 100 feet. The next road could be based on 10 feet. The next one could be based on 500 feet. Uh, that, there's a, there's a nice map actually on our website, uh, on our E911 website that shows what town increments each town is, is using and uh, carves out the village areas as well. And so the recommend, so your recommendation is the thousand basis? It's a thousand or a 5.2 foot, 5.28 foot system or a thousand base. Um, that is what roughly 80, 85% of the state of Vermont is currently using. That's what the town uses currently. Okay. That's that 5.28 that I kept yes. reading, but did not understand what it meant. Okay. Yeah. So a thousand's just a thousand's one mile, basically. Okay. Okay. Um, trustees, questions, concerns? This is not something we're voting on. No. This is a conversation that we're having. Even if we were to weigh in on this. I wouldn't want to do it without uh, the entire village meeting. Oh, uh, no. warned at a, at a village meeting. This was strongly opposed by the majority of the village when it came up before. Did this come up for a vote in the past? It, Several times. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. And a, a strongly opposed. Um, by the trustees or was it no, not village just by meeting? Trustees, by, so by the village residents. So it was voted yeah. on at village meeting? Um, 
You know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it was voted on. A village voted bidding. on by the residents. It wasn't voted on by the residents. It was certainly quite a few showed up to uh, express their opinion, which okay. was. In but general. here's my main problem, Jeff. If, if I may just say, yeah. is we are using mutual aid ambulances, and they don't know our streets, roads, house numbers, and our clientele is getting older. A lot of people are unable to assist with us or them locating the house. And it's just a matter of time before we don't find somebody in time, especially a mutual aid ambulance service. Because there are many crazy problems in this village. And we can't even address them until we start looking at road names and how the whole system's going to flow. There are some very serious problems. And yeah. can you, uh, in here there was a, um, Somewhere I read in here uh, that there's a liability concern. Yes. Can you talk to us about that? What uh, that probably is? Tyra, Tyra can better than I, but my understanding, if you are aware of the problems, and they have been laid out in these letters and many more emails that the town manager and I received, mm -hmm. when you choose to stay with the system, you could potentially be liable should somebody be injured or die because they weren't able to be found. That's pretty much uh, my understanding as well. I'm not a lawyer, uh, so I don't really like to weigh in on that. But that's pretty much my my understanding as well. And I totally get people don't want to change their numbers, but we have literally <laughs> run out of space. I mean, literally, we're just throwing numbers at houses now that make no rhyme or reason. Okay. Can I ask you a quick question? Yeah, I mean, just just a second. I want to make sure that I capture. Are there any other technical questions from the Every trustees? house going to be changed? It would change every, every house. Every yeah. house. Unless you're one on a street and your driveway is within five feet of the intersection, you might not change. <laughs> Brenda, do you have any? I know that this has been a big concern for quite some time. Um, I <clears throat> I think we're going to have to deal with it at some point. And nobody's going to like it. There's uh, sort of two other things I'll mention. Mm -hmm. uh, there's definitely sort of a priority list. Uh, there's a particular few streets that uh, are significantly more concerning than others. Um, so I might suggest considering uh, looking at redoing a, a few certain streets um, as sort of a, a golden rule, which is in which is in our addressing standards rule, is there's sort of three main, three or four main aspects that all towns need to abide by. Um, and uh, those would be that there needs to be an odd on the left and an even on the right, um, which isn't always followed in the village. Uh, there needs to be a sequential order to the numbering. So like in Gulf Avenue, for example, uh, the sequence uh, falls apart. Um, another one is that uh, each individualized building structure that uh, requires an address uh, would get its own whole integer number. Uh, so I think it's Pleasant Street, for example, uh, We've run out of numbers five, six times over, and we're starting to throw letters in, into a, a house number field. And, uh, the fourth sort of one to abide by is when there are three or more homes on a shared locatable driveway, uh, is that that's one of the determinations to create a new street. I believe there's maybe one or two of those in the village but regardless of the town those are the four sort of dead set requirements uh, so you could also when i was mentioning earlier you could piecemeal it you could focus on the heavy hitters first other streets aren't as concerned where they do follow those sort of four standards could you did you could you said this the list of those streets those ones that you just said are the most 
I didn't follow that completely. You said you actually know the exact streets that are the problems. That yeah, so River Street's a problem has been on their radar. Golf Avenue, Golf uh, Avenue. Maxim Meadow Way. Maxim Meadow Way, okay. Pine Street. Yeah, the, the list of the priorities, it's probably around six or seven streets, maybe. And, and Pleasant Street? Pleasant Street. And a section of Pleasant Street, the whole, all of Pleasant the whole, Street? There's no numbers left. On the eastern end, right? Yeah. By so, so, as, so naming those priority streets, one, two, three, four, that's five of them anyway that you named, is it possible to consider renumbering those streets and leaving the other numbers where they exist? Yeah, so that's what he's saying, is doing it piecemeal. And actually, I was going to suggest the exact opposite, that we start out on the peripheral, where the houses are not as dense, do a road, and let's take um, Pine Street. There's six houses. Let's renumber it, do it, show people that it's, it's painless. Um, you get a letter, we'll install the house numbers for you, but it's really not a big deal. Well, it's not painless for a lot of people if their house is number two or number four, and it has been for 200 years. But um, also... But it's better it also, than dying. What, 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 <laughs> also, there's a tremendous problem for businesses changing their address, right? especially if they've been in business a long time, and they have so many different clients who send them mail based on what address that's been around for half a century. Yep, but that, they'll actually work with you for a year. You can mm -hmm. keep that address and get all that stuff slowly swapped over. Yeah, there's a, um, in here, there's a list yeah, of like yeah. exactly how it happens. Because the U.S. Postal Service is working so well. Uh, yeah, well that was my thought. Days. Not a conversation yeah. for another <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But anybody who's ever moved or changed their last name <laughs> has been through this process. <laughs> yeah. It is. I, I get it, Jeff. I'm all about the history and the numbers, but my job is to sit before you and to say there's a concern. I totally, I, I get it. I get, I get the concern. I'm sorry. Oh yes, I'm so sorry. Um, to, to also chime in with the with that process of, of of an address change, the resident actually does nothing with the post office. Yeah. Um, all that would be coming from the town, uh, and post office would update it on behalf of the town. Uh, essentially, the homeowners would be responsible for anywhere where they would want to get mail. So, magazines, utility companies, hills, um, town records would be updated from the town side, uh, now be updated by me. Their phone record would be updated by me. Their caller ID, that is. Um, and one other step, which has made significant leaps and bounds, is uh, is GPS systems. Um, it used to be a nightmare. Um, every state goes through this issue during any readdressing. Um, Google Maps, for example, has has made huge strides. It is significantly easier to update GPS systems. It used to take years. Uh, it's now weeks to months, um, but that's uh, GPS and sort of parcel delivery are sort of the two biggest hiccups of any sort of free addressing. John, do you want my to comment, comment is, is exactly you, about that. I'm oh, sorry. Oh yeah, just to make sure you get. My, my comment is exactly about that. I've updated my address. It took 15 minutes to take effect, and I've, I'm wondering whether whether we know how many houses in the village or, or locations in the village are not correctly findable on GPS. Uh, I've never not been, and so if, and that wouldn't be hard to determine actually, since we have a list of all the addresses, it would probably take a half a day to figure out which ones were not correctly identifiable. So I'm sort of, it sounds like this system of E911 was actually invented before Google Maps was in fact the universal tool for accurately finding anything. Um, and so I'm just wondering whether or not, you know, whether that has been sort of considered thinking about the future. And that doesn't solve the numbering problem. Yeah, well, Although yeah. Google Maps can handle any numbering scheme yeah. you can come up with. And maybe the ambulance folks 
So, you know, I mean, is, 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 a, is a reasonable solution in the real, in the practical world to, to use, to tell someone that it's 16 the green, which isn't related to any mileage, but I've never, you know, given out that address 750 times and no one has ever not found it. So I'm just wondering, I'm not trying to, yeah. I'm not trying to criticize, you know, I, this was, this law was developed before. <laughs> We obviously have a problem, but maybe Tyler can answer that. Is there any reason why we couldn't go in that direction and actually... In other words, it's not that hard to find people's addresses. It's just hard to find people's addresses using EU 911. So you're, you're asking us to rely on GPS. I'm just wondering if we check to see if GPS was 100% accurate, and, and, and it's not hard to make. If, I'm just suggesting going yeah. down that path investigating it. Maybe we can make, yeah. if there's 300 houses, yeah. 500 houses, we could make them all accurate. They're probably, 95% of them are probably accurate already. I, maybe that's a terrible solution. I'm just it's suggesting, I mean, yeah, it's not just the, the ambulances uh, that need to find where sure. people live. Yeah, yeah. Of course, it's life or death, but yeah. we all have to find where people live. And from what I can tell, we're all finding this. <laughs> so, so I'm just wondering why the ambulances can't. Well, and there's a cost. I mean, you're talking $300 per ambulance. Um, for for, what? GPS, for, what? for, for what? GPS. Yeah. Uh, Tyler, for Tyler, government. I... Uh, I'm sorry, this is Pete from Two Rivers. Tyler, yeah, you, gotta, you gotta address this. Yeah. It, it, this, it, what we're talking about is not how it works. This is backing into it backwards, and I'm sure Tyler can address it. Okay, great. Yeah. So the, the, one of the concerns with sort of GPS systems is obviously it may not be fully accurate. Um, but the, one of the biggest issues is what Dave was saying, it's mutual aid. So every agency sort of flies by the seat of their pants. Uh, they use whatever method or means they can do to find somebody, whether it's local knowledge or they're using Google Maps themselves or they're using Apple Maps or maybe it's like uh, Hartford Fire where they have a really nice, fancy, expensive CAD GPS system. Uh, it's it totally varies so we can't really solely rely on one system um i i think i i can offer some clarity here um a standardized system this is pete from two rivers results in a system that all um databases can consume and process uh and re um, put out to people in a reasonable manner. A system that has custom numbers throughout, um, Apple Maps, Google Maps may do an update on that and the machine learning algorithm or a person who's updating it might go through and be like, huh, why is this house number this? And uh, it may get flagged by that system. Um, we don't know what they're gonna do because it's so non-standard. Um, using a standard increment system is the safest and is the recognized procedure for house numbering across the country. Um, locating things with GPS is something we do, but it, it, it's, it's kind of a different concept here, even though it's related to location. We, we're talking about two kind of different locatable technologies and applying lat long to every house, essentially, and then having someone try to find that, um, when they don't, when they can't look down at their phone in the dark, but they can roughly, you know, with the lights on the ambulance, look around and use um, the house numbers or just use distances on the ground um, to find something. That's a kind of a fail safe that you don't have with um, a GPS latitude longitude location. Um, and again, we don't know what the providers, 
the, the providers like Google, and Google has subcontractors who are providing them with uh, location data, how that data might get um, dealt with when it's very non-standard. Can I make a comment? Yes, Jill. So um, I'm sitting here thinking, oh my goodness, I don't want to live at number 4082 North Street. So I wonder if rather than having a hypothetical conversation, it would help the discussion if we took a couple of streets and showed how they're currently numbered and then show how they would be alternately numbered using different standard increment systems to show people what the impact of this change might be. And then instead of using our imaginations, we use some information. First of all, Jill, you'd be like 100 and something. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but there would, there would be almost no resonance with four digits, depending how the streets are finally done. See, so that's already um, made it a little bit easier. So illustration helps. Yeah, there, there's currently only one street in the entire state of Vermont in the five digits. And it's like Route 100 or something. And, I park or something like that. Tyler, do you, do you have the set of new numbers for Woodstock Village already? Like, I believe, Pete, if you look at our, if you pull out our data from BCGI, I believe it's already all populated in the in the uh, comments field or the oh, calculated, okay. cal calculated address field. I believe. Okay. Uh, if it's not exactly that number, it will be very close. Uh, okay. I can check right now. And where is it? Is so this on a public website? So that's the village trustees could request from Tyler or someone else. If it's not populated, we can certainly provide that within a day if we really wanted to sit down and do it. And are there alternatives, or is there just one standard increment system? Well, there uh, are. That would be the standard. Yeah. I'm sorry, that was garbled. What did you say? That would be the standard. So there's no alternative. There's just one alternative. Yeah, writ written in the rules is whenever readdressing needs to occur, it needs to follow that 5.28. Uh, uh, as as it's written in the language of the rules, I believe it's something to the tune of uh, when a road is no longer sustainable um, or a road needs to be readdressed uh uh, or when a new road is created, it must use that thousand phase system. Uh, as Pete mentioned, it is actually a federal uh, suggestion, but in Vermont, we've made it sort of the mandate. Thank you. <clears throat> and I just wanted to say to the trustees, um, the town did this in 2012. And it was considerably more difficult for the town because the town was larger and their numbers were a disaster. They made, made the village numbers look good. But we did it. We got through it. Yeah, but Actually, that's, that's, quite, but that's from funny. your point of view of what's a disaster or not. And in the village with a lot of historic homes. And there, the, uh, the, Jeff, I, I think there know, are you some just, people who would argue in the town there are historic homes, well, too. Well, I'm sure there are historic ho homes in the town. However, it's concentrated in a one-square-mile village in a very powerful way. Anyway, you know, maybe people There's don't feel... There's a lot feel, of historic maybe homes in South Woodstock. Maybe people don't feel the same way and they... Taps. Maybe people don't feel the same way they did back then. And I certainly think the trustees would need to ascertain if they still do or don't. I think it's very important. Well, what are the, um, so you said that, that it's possible to, to get um, at least a ballpark idea of, of, what the, of what numbers might be on some of the streets. Is that something that you could provide us? It's a sample. Yeah. yeah. He said he could do that. Let's see. Yeah, we could totally do that. Okay. That would be helpful. We've, we've also, to know, uh, our addressing standards rules that you may see or may be floating out there um, was written or last updated uh, back in 2012. Mm -hmm. It might say a 2018 date in there, but it's actually 2012. Uh, recently, in August 
2022, uh, the board, uh, being the board members, had adopted the new set of standards. Um, so there's a lot more defining language in the rules now. Um, specifically helpful um, for readdressing, but also clarification on many, many aspects such as how to deal with corner lots, how to deal with uh, units and suites and apartments, which was never spoken about, um, and how to deal, uh, and also added language uh, in regards to private roads, which was sort of uh, not real clear uh, before. Um, so in any event, there's a new standards document out there. I don't think it's floating around yet. Um, it has been approved, but I don't think it's actually uh, in the public eye yet. Uh, do you have a sense of when we can see that? That would certainly be helpful. Uh, I can share the, the version with like all the red notes on it. Okay. But I do not have like the clean, crisp. Uh, I, I would encourage the version. trustees to wait till the final document is available. Okay. <laughs> when when do you anticipate that? I would say probably in the next one to three. I'm sorry. You, you got cut off in the next uh, one to three. I would what? say probably within the next one to three months. Okay. But it it was approved in August. Okay. And that's where it works well. I wasn't coming here tonight to ask for a decision. I know it, it's going to be a difficult discussion, but we really need to head down that road okay. and have this discussion. Can you keep an eye on that and let us know Absolutely. when that comes out? Absolutely. Okay. Um, David, have we had any issues with fire or ambulance trying to find people because of our numbering system at yes. present? Yes. Okay. Good. Absolutely. And how about like Stafford Commons? Like if you had a fire call there, is that properly numbered? Stafford Commons is, yes. So okay. it's really not the fire calls, it's the- um, Ambulance calls. It, it, yeah, it's Blood the person people. that can't tell you where they are. They're in a multi-story building or they're in, they say they're at 51 Central and that's all they can get out. Well, they're really at 51B, so we waste time or break doors. And we've done this, broke doors into the wrong building. Oh, because wow. the address was wrong, or we didn't get all the information. Um, hmm. So there is a problem. Yeah. So what would happen right now? Sort of that same scenario that Dave is just talking about would would sort of exist at uh, Maxim Meadow, which was one of our priority ones. Each one of those buildings is two seventeen, oh. and then has a hyphen address. It's actually the only street. In entire state that has hyphens. That was an artifact of being on the edge of the town with their uh, prefix town highway system. Um, right. Yeah, that was awful. Um, just for clarity, Safford Commons is in the town and yeah. not in the village. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Sorry. And so for a, for a building that's, you know, say on central, or maybe the document has this in it, I'm sure it does, but if it's I don't know, 23 Central Street, I'm making that up, but it's got the basement, the main floor, and three apartments in the top. Is that 20, you know, does that become <coughs> all separate things? So is it 100, 101, 102, 103, 104 Central? It can be, yeah, it can, yep, that's the way I would prefer is okay. first floor of the 100, second floor of the 200s, third floor of the 300s. Okay, so you standardize that for yes. the block or whatever. Okay. Yeah. That is thrown into the new standards as well, that very discussion. Awesome. Are there any more questions or comments about this? Um, Just for the, the knowledge of the trustees, yes. um, all the old numbers are archived. So they don't go away. They can be researched um, when you're doing mm -hmm. a historical oh, okay. mm -hmm. uh, you know, discussion and um, there, we also put them in the grand list for the town, the old numbers, so so they were available. And Mary Riley uh, and, uh, very um, smartly came up with basically a letter that was um, certified by the town that said, this is what's your old number, this is your new number, because many mortgage companies and stuff like that requested those um, and other folks 
and we just kept uh, Mary kept them all on file, and they're still available in the town. And then when people needed to prove that what their old number was and what their new number was, that letter was available. And that was all her idea. It worked out very well. Excellent. Okay. So that we, we threw that into the standards back in 2012. Awesome. Yay, because of Mary. Thank you. <laughs> so um, I would, so thank you everybody, um, Peter and uh, Tyler and David, thank you for all of this and mm -hmm. these updates. Um, I would once the new standards come out, I would love to for the trustees to be able to take a look at that. The the sort of the mock up um, that would be helpful mm -hmm. information. We'll so get you all that. Yep. So this is volumes of stuff. Is this ten pages or thirty pages of diagrams of different numbers of houses and stuff? Yeah, we can print you off. Uh, uh, I believe we can get a map book, right, Tyler? Uh, yeah, I can make you one. Yeah. That okay. will give every street and every address. Yeah. Okay. And this letter that we got gives us 30 days. <laughs> but I assume our conversation means that, that we get an extension. Um, as long as we're having the conversation. We're having the conversation. Having conversation being had. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. This is um, very educational. So much more to learn. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay, let's move on to the next item, new business, uh, finance committee presentation. John, would you like to come up? Tell us where the money is. Well, Tell yeah. me how much I have, how much I can spend. Actually, before, yeah, before I give you this document, let me just prepare you for what this topic oh. is. Oh. No, no, it's, it's, we're not going to give you numbers tonight. Yes. I just want everyone to be clear about that. So the finance committee, it's just a building what Bill asked earlier, it, you know, was established about three or four months ago. Um, what, I, what we, uh, what we want to do is to explain to you what process we'd like to work with you on over the next two months uh, and just get your concurrence. We have d had done exactly the same presentation with the, with the select board. We're going to have an issue. This, this has the dates for the select board in it. And we're going to have an issue, as you and I talked about, about scheduling. So I'd like to go through this quickly and then just take a few minutes to try to schedule, to talk about the principles of scheduling and then maybe Seton, you and I and Tom can, can okay. sort of get together offline to pick how yes. we, how, precisely how we do this. The, the this is discussing the budget and really the, quest, the points of discussion are around the parts of the budget which are shared, basically the police department. Um, so because we think that we should be having one discussion, not two, about those, if that's possible. If it isn't, then we'll have two discussions. Okay. In any event, what we're presenting to you now is the process that we'd like to go through for the first year, mm -hmm. meaning the next two months, and rather than, and then our next meeting will be starting, what we were going to propose is one of three meetings with you to talk about the budget, the final one where you would adopt the budget. But you'll have two cracks at it before the final one. Okay. That's the process we've got. So you can pass those down here. And here. And Brittany, you have a copy of this, right, for the record? Yeah, it's yeah. up on the screen now. Oh, look at that. Okay. So Let's just see. a reminder on page two, which is really page one, mm -hmm. um, these were the uh, this these were the roles that you asked the, that you and the select board asked the finance committee to play to support the process of creating and and, and the reason for summarizing this is that we can only play a few of these this year and then as we gain, we can play all of them next year and, and we will start playing all of them in January as soon as we're done with the budget but for this year we can only really do the first two support the process of creating the budget and suggest improvements to the current budget process the other things we will do is to help restructure the accounting system to make the budgeting process easy and to make the numbers understandable to the community and to to yourselves, we'll conduct some analysis to assess improvement opportunities that may involve things like benchmarking, historical trends, and so forth, forecasting. Um, all of these are things that we can improve but have not for this year because it requires building a kind of a foundation that we don't have yet, and developing a long-term financial plan, and then also reviewing and recommending policies. Um, just for example, one policy that the select board has transferred for, to us a, a week ago was how to use extra funds like prior year surpluses or ARPA funds. And the, the staff have actually recommended a policy 
which is great. Uh, Tom's not here, but they developed that. And then the select board said, well, why don't we have to find, let's pass that through the finance committee and have them use that. And we'll, we will be able to build some of that into our budget presentations to you, okay. e.g. the ARPA funds and so forth. And you'll see that in the format that I'm going to share with you. So. You should know that some of that the, this board itself had some ideas on how to use those ARPA funds that were different from what you received from Tom. Absolutely, and we would. We, 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 and we would. See, it should be, you know, just saying. You should know yeah. what he came up with, as well as what we already uh, had absolutely. discussed. Absolutely, you know, absolutely. And in fact, I think the reason, and, and I think our process, which is to have multiple meetings with you before we have a meeting with you, where you decide on the budget will allow for exactly that kind of exchange. Great. So, um, the, we, there are six members of the commission, uh, Tom and Zoe, and we've been meeting as a group. And not every person on the commission has met with every department, but uh, let me just sort of take you through the process. On page four, this is what has happened so far and what we're proposing to happen. Um, there were a set of common assumptions, very few, uh, roughly a 3% salary increase, I think $4 for regular fuel and $5 for diesel fuel. Um, a kind of a close to 18% hike on health care costs. And I think those costs were assumed throughout the departments and so forth. Um, the rest of it was sort of done bottom up. Uh, the department budgets were submitted to Tom and Zoe back and forth between them. And then they had what they were comfortable with. And that's when the finance committee began to get involved. Um, so there were department meetings um, with every department. Um, we discussed, we made some adjustments to their proposed budgets that they agreed to. We, ident we talked about contingencies, which we have in some cases, many cases, but not all cases. What would you do if the select board or the trustees said you needed to cut by 5%? Um, uh, just so you don't get too excited by that, many people said we would cut capital spending, which is what I think we've always often done in the past, um, which is one of the reasons why we have such a challenging budget, but that's my own personal view. Uh, this would all lead up to review number one, which for the select board would be next week, November 15th, if we hope we can meet that deadline. And the idea is that the select board at that meeting and, and, uh, and whatever dates we do with you would provide your first level of feedback. And I'm going to show you the format in which we're going to present the budget in a minute, because it's going to try to focus on the overall, the, the biggest issues, not every single line item, although you'll get that, you'll have access to it physically but we're gonna to try to focus the discussion on the biggest line items. And we're going to, right from the beginning, talk about the, not just, this is 32,500, but this total budget will likely result in a tax rate of this, which is this increase from last year. So in other words, we're gonna forecast not just the spending, but we're gonna forecast the special articles, we're gonna forecast the change in the value of the grand list, and we're gonna do the calculation that they do in July, in July, I think, is when you actually do it. Mm -hmm which is after we've made all these decisions. And that number won't be perfect, but we think it'll be as close as we can make it, given that it's November and December. So that's what that is. So anyway, first review in November, we go back and work for a couple of weeks, come back in early December for the second review. Review meaning, and then you say feedback, that's not enough, it's too much, can't you do X, can you investigate this with Y? Uh, and then finally a third discussion, a final discussion where we hope you'll recommend the budget on December 20th. From a technical, from a time available point of view, we could go past this. I think, we, I don't remember the exact date, Tom, but it's sort of the 10th or 15th of January. If we had to, in other words, if we had to come back and do something a final time, there's some, we don't, there's some wiggle room. But we're, we're not hoping to do that. But if something unexpected comes up, it, there, it is like technically possible to, to have a meeting in the first week in January and make the decision, and then we can still print the warning and so forth. Is that correct? Or? It is, I think. I'm uh, not it's, encouraging it's, it. No, and I certainly would say let's try to avoid that I, because that's the way you create errors, rushing at the last minute but, but to put it together. Right. So, uh, but, but, uh, but it is consistent. I'm, yeah, I'm not saying that don't worry, we can always go to January. I'm saying what Tom's saying. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. But, so that's the process that we'd like to follow. And let me just, before you opine on it, let me just keep going and show you sort of the format, or sort of what we've done to date and the format of it. So as we went through that series of meetings on page five, we recommended about $150,000 of reductions from the budgets that were agreed 
to and presented. But we also added about $150,000 of who addition. You, who, who, who are you talking about here? The select the town? No, the finance committee. Oh, the town so, and the village. The the combined. Board. Combined. Okay, these numbers. Are, yeah, all, okay. yeah. The, okay. these are the only real numbers I, in, that I'm going to show you. The rest are just examples. But the, yes, the total budget. Okay. Um, we, we, we recommended expense reductions. I'm just trying to give you a sense. You know, we said, well, that seems like too much. And the department, the Tom agreed. And we said, okay, let's bake that in. We also did the opposite, where we said, you know what, we think that you're under budgeting because of the historical trends and what you just told us about the department operations. Um, there were some places where we recommended some revenue increases in terms of fees and things of that sort. And then we have a long list of, of additional expense reduction opportunities, which I hope we're going to be able to prioritize for you and say, I'm hoping we can do this by next week. We may not be able to do all of it by next week. To say these were ideas that came up, these are the risks, <laughs> these are this is the impact on service. Here's an, I'll give you an example on the next page of, of what that could be, um, and in some of these cases, the finance committee will have a point of view, and in other cases, we won't. But we're we'll, we're going to try to give you those options, um, and this yeah we'll give you those options. So on page six is an example of the high level that we hope to bring you. And then I'll show you the department level, which is on the next page. We're going to try to bring together all of the pieces of the equation so we can get to a tax rate throughout our discussions, not waiting till the end. And that's going to include the following categories, the prior year surplus or deficit, like you've just talked about, um, the forecasted non-tax revenue, the fees and the permits and things of that sort, the, tw the, the budget, that's what we've you've always done. By the way, these numbers are, are made up to be completely ridiculous and different so that they don't, you don't mistake <laughs> them for anything. They're just completely random. Um, the expected special articles, to the best we can predict what they'll be, we'll probably simply just use last year's except, and we'll take out the things that were one time only, you know. Um, any ARPA or any surplus or deficit that is available or allocated, and then that will add all that up, and that's how much property tax we need. We'll then fo forecast the grand list the best we can and come up with a tax rate and say, okay, the budget that we're presenting to you today at the high level has this tax rate that's compared to the following tax rate from last year. Now let's go through and now go to page seven. And what we're going to try to do on page seven is what we're calling a department summary. And what we're going to do here is take the 15 largest line items, which will probably account we're hoping for 80 or 90 percent of the expenses. You will have all the line items, but we're not going to go through the line items in account number order. <laughs> we're going to go through them in size order. <laughs> right. And so, and we'll break them down into categories, but these are, this is actually real for the, uh, you know, we'll, we'll show FY22 actual and FY23 budget, by the way, and then we'll show the FY24 budget and the change versus those two. FY22 actual is unfortunately the most recent actual we have, but we'll also compare it to FY23 budget. And we'll highlight, you know, here's where the major growth is and so forth. The department managers will be at the meeting when we present to you, so they'll be able to answer the questions, but we can answer a few of the questions, but obviously they'll be there as well. Um, and again, we'll do this, yeah. I think one thing that's different, right, you know, so far, other than the format, perhaps, and you know, getting to the tax rate right at the beginning of the discussions, the only other difference is on page eight. Here's an example. These are um, uh, the numbers are made up, but the ideas aren't. So, for example, in talking to the police, we talked about, well, what if you, you know, how much would you be able to save if you eliminated the midnight to eight a.m. shift? This isn't the real number. But we talked about that as a contingency, and the service impact is, you know, pretty clear. I mean, not precise, but it's obviously the general impact is it's going to take longer to respond. And we talked to Robbie about, like, how would you respond and what is the process if you don't have an on-duty shift and so forth. There's another idea about delaying purchase of cruisers and cars and so forth. You've talked about that. There's another contingency about providing police with basically eliminating the duplicate cars, I think, if I saying this right, that the village and the town kind of require sort of separate cars. Um, 
which as opposed to a different way of assigning cars in which we think possibly this is an idea what we might recommend I'm, I'm not personally the expert on it where we think that the response rates and the service will be exactly the same it's just the people will share the cars mm -hmm. instead of having separate cars you don't have to accept those things yeah. i'm just yeah. saying we're going to try to give you options that's sort of you know in that in that list of, of possible cost savings and that's it and then and then the last thing is that there are a whole set of policy and process issues and improvements that will for the most part be dealt with next year because we're just trying to kind of present to you the basic reviews and so forth you know should we we can talk about them this year in, in general we can develop policies or hope for them next year should we budget in contingencies we don't really do that now should we budget more fully for are we budgeting enough for future capital expenditures yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> you know um, how should the ARPA funds be used that I think we will highlight we won't have a policy well actually there is a proposed policy uh, for how to do that I mentioned to Tom when you're out of the room that Tom and has proposed a policy the finance committee will review that and recommend it along with the with the town record with the management team recommending it should we implement monthly forecasting can we reduce there's some accounting work that we could do um, this is but the, the, there's some ways of simplifying accounting mm -hmm. that would reduce the number that wouldn't it would just reduce the number of line items we have to deal with and frankly also the way the village and the town um, bill each other for costs we could build we the town could build build the village and the village could build the town in aggregate rather than per transaction you know if I, spend, I mean you could have one transaction a year for police a four hundred thousand dollar transaction for police instead of tracking every month how many hours Tom spends meeting with Robbie and, and allocating a third of that to the village and a quarter of it to the town and 10% of it to the sewer department. So, but we're not going to do that this year. I'm just yep. saying that if those are things that you were hoping to get from the finance committee, you'll get them, but you won't get them this year. Can the finance committee do analysis of what we can, if we combine the village and the town? Where I have, <laughs> I have strongly, well, I have pushed very hard with the finance committee to say that's not a, that's not the, that's not why you established the finance committee. I know. I just, yeah. So we're not I, if it's up to me we will baby not. steps bill baby steps I know, I know. come on we will not no but but there are financial things that we can do that have nothing to do with the establishment or the elimination of the village we don't have we can account for it at less cost of accounting and not change anything else and so but again that's next year so that's the sort of the process really the only thing we're asking you today is and, and want to put my thumb on the scale of unless you have major concerns we'd like to go through this process but do you have major concerns the select board is okay with this can you just tell me John in page uh, seven those items are the numbers are not real but the, the line items are in terms of the largest no actually I think these I think these numbers are actually oh, they are. Okay. but there's no FY 24 budget column here yet yeah okay. I'm just I just wanted to show you that you would see big bigger line these are actually the bigger line items um, but you wouldn't see every line item, and and you won't. Yeah, it's not every line. Well, we don't see every. Line. So you can see. You you'll there'll be yes. an appendix, right. which will be in yeah. the thing the same format you've always seen, which is seven. We have seventeen hundred and fifty right. line yeah. items. And it's not, it's not the one the public sees in the annual report. Either. It is the one they see with the, with every little appendix. Oh yeah, that's why the annual report is sixty pages long or ninety pages long. I the towns is just ours. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm talking about the towns. I, yeah, I, I, I the village know. doesn't. Yeah, sorry, I'm talking about. We the like town. this a lot better. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's it's designed so we so the town so members of the community can know absolutely nothing about the financial goings on <laughs> of, the, of the municipal government that serves it. I, it, it. Yeah, we have 1,750 accounts. We have 125 salary accounts between the towns. That's more. I think that's more people than we have. Is it? Yes. 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 Absolutely. Right. So that means more, we have more accounts more than accounts people. Than we have people. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Yes. Anyway, that's next year. But yeah. yeah. So I mean, are you generally okay? Three three meetings. You know. The, yeah. But you think the first one is going to be next week? Well, I, I, the, the first one is scheduled for next week at the on the select board date. I, we we may be able to. We will have that meeting. We have a lot of information to share. Whether or not we're going to be able to, frankly, the hard part of this is forecasting the tax rate. Because to do that, we've done the other stuff. We have all of the other stuff. We just have to compile it. But getting it down to the tax rate it requires us to 
forecast the grand list. And that process is a little bit, some of the people, it's a little bit new to them. It's completely new to us. I just want to make, and we could, I just don't know that we can, I just want to make sure we do it accurately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But are you scheduling distinct meetings separately for these two boards? Well, so let, that's what, let's just talk about that. The yeah. dates that we have here have been scheduled with the select. Yeah, this is just the separate. But now the question is how should we incorporate, incorporate the, the discussion really of how should we how should we incorporate it? if we do we have two discussions about the do we just have our own a, a parallel schedule with you or do we combine would, a discussion for police or do we deal with it uh, offline I, I think it should be parallel i mean i think we should have our, our own yeah yeah our own meetings with you okay or else it gets very long it gets very long and more complicated okay well you have some experience with this so I yeah and as i told john a few weeks ago we have so many joint meetings currently and possibly more depending on how things go tomorrow um yeah to try to coordinate everybody is a lot right now yeah now you you do only meet monthly though yeah but we could we I, could have special yeah meetings. i think we, we could yeah we could absolutely meetings. have a special okay. meeting yeah, yeah. So, let me just ask jill just because this is i'd love to do special meetings in fact restricted to just yeah just for your sake as well yeah, yes. of course yeah yeah, yeah. that'd be great much as I've enjoyed the discussions that preceded this tonight. Uh, <laughs> Jill, do you want to comment on, on sort of parallel meetings? That's okay with me. I, I, is, yes. Can you see a downside to that? or is, I mean, other than No, I, I just want to, so to, traditionally the village budget hasn't been decided till about a month later than the town budget. Yeah, that's correct. correct. And the implication, the, the one serious implication of that is that the town, the the town budget needs to include a number for the police budget. So that really needs to be determined before January the 15th or whatever the date is that the select board budget needs to be determined, which is often before you traditionally do your budget. So I'd encourage you to see if you can stick to the timetable that gets everything done by the end of December to help the whole process. And that would be that would be reflected in the schedule of the special meetings that you might be willing to to, to do. Is that what is that what you're? Yeah, yeah. When is your December meeting? Second Tuesday. Second Tuesday. Second Tuesday. Yeah. Second Tuesday. I think it's the third. Okay, so very similar. Oh. Okay. Uh, yeah. He's, yes. 13th. You are correct. You do that. Yeah. So December thirteenth. So Jill, does that mean that the, that the, the the how would the timing? Well, okay, we can work this offline, but I think what you're suggesting, Joe, is that the timing, at least of the first meeting, um, which in which we could perhaps focus on the just the police department at the first meeting, should be when, as soon as you know, it, but before the end of November, right? Well, if the last the last meet, it doesn't really matter what the first meeting is. It matters that the last meeting, when the village agree the total budget, happens before December the thirty first. Well, the reason why I'm saying the earlier meetings is because since we're taking a tax rate approach, which mm -hmm. I think is the right approach, the town isn't going to know fully the tax rate until there's some kind of narrowing of the options on the police budget. Now, maybe yeah. that won't vary wildly, but it would seem to me that it would be, you know, otherwise we're going to be finding out about the tax rate on the last meeting. And I, I want us to start by finding out about it at the first meeting and then adjusting it. So I, 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 we don't have to decide this as a group, but why don't, I think yeah. we understand we're going to have parallel processes. We need to end in December. Yes. Maybe, see, I think maybe can, you and I can just work out the, achieving yeah. that. And I think we could, I mean, we can, is it helpful if the, our first meeting focuses, the, the main focus is on police? Absolutely. Okay. I, don't, don't you think I mean, our budget is also significantly smaller than the town, I so understand. it should take. But the police is the main area of overlap. So, yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think if we do that, then we accomplish what I'm, what I'm asking. So should we try to schedule a meeting before, obviously before our December meeting? Yes. Uh, and before Thanksgiving. Yeah. Before uh, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, I think. So that means next week. Uh, or early the following week. Yeah. <coughs> okay. <clears throat> Not before the 15th, because no. I think we're going to have trouble getting ready for that. No. <clears throat> um. Okay, well, we'll send out an email to yeah. the group then. Yeah, next Wednesday or Thursday. Perhaps. Yeah. Well, I don't exactly. want to delay it. If we could do it now, we could, we could try yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to make sure that Gabe's included. Yeah, well, if we could figure out the four of us, a uh, date that works for the four of us, and see if we can include make Gabe work in. Yeah. Just save some time. 
Remember, he'll have multiple. We're not, you're not going to finalize it until yeah. right, the third meeting. So. Right. Yeah. Can it be in the evening? Well, yes. I mean, Brenda needs to be there. So. Yeah. And I, Brenda cannot do Thursdays. No. Oh, how about Wednesday, next Wednesday? Yeah. All right. Wednesday's fine. Tuesday's fine. Monday. Well, we, I don't think we can do it before the 15th. I think we, we're going to have our hands full just getting ready for that one. And then once we get ready for that one, we'll be ready for you, too, I think. Because the process but The is, 16th would be too fast, though, right? No, I, I think... I think we should, Jill. I think we should start. Let's let's just start with the 16th. We, we, the, the meeting may not be complete from top to bottom, but we'll have real numbers. We have we have the discussion of the police budget. I think we can go through it. All right. How about 6:30? I, I I don't know that I can do the 16th. Oh. Okay. I have a lot of discussion. I can also say the 20, you know, the 21st, or maybe people go away for the whole week. But the 21st is a 21st Monday. works for me. 21st oh, works way much better. better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 21st is way better. better. Joe, is that any reason not to do the 21st? I'm just since you're on the call, I'm just at 6 p.m. You're saying, or sorry, was six. That, yeah, I can do six. Uh, I, can you do six? Or is that yeah? I can do six. Well, right. six. I thought, yeah, I thought you heard, I heard that. That's why I was saying. So. So, well, you, are you talking about Monday the 21st? Yes. Yeah. That's okay with me. Bill, that's good with you? Yeah, it's good for me. Okay. Okay. Well, I will get in touch with Gabe and see if that works for and him. And what time did we decide? Six o'clock. Yeah. The, the, the other possibility is to come to the select board meeting just for the police, and we just do the police budget in with both of you. So you just come to part of the select board meeting on the 15th. As it just as an alternative date. I'm not sure. I'm not sure we would be able to come to. I can't do that. An agreement at okay. on that night. No. Without first meeting amongst ourselves. I'm not available that night. Yeah, I can't do the fifteenth. I'm not available the twenty-first. You are not available the twenty-first. I'm out of town. Flying back from Orlando on Monday at eight o'clock. In the interview. Which we're about to ask about a question. <laughs> <laughs> and you think you're important to that discussion. All right. I so don't know if you can you do no, the no, 20? Of course, no, no, of course we want. No, we, you, you need to be there. there. <laughs> I'm joking. Can All you right. do the 22nd? Yes. Okay. All right. Can 22nd. Can you all do the 22nd, Bill? Thank you for, uh, for bringing that up, Robbie. 22nd is. I have SDV. Are you talking at 6? Six? 6. Mm -hmm. We do a different time. I'm 6 30. 6 30. 6 30. 6 30 is good for me. All right, so 6.30. Bobby, can you do 6.30 on the 22nd? Yep. Okay. 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 I will text Gabe. Okay. And where's the meeting going to be held? Here? Here. Yeah. Yes. I think it's a public, I mean, it's a yes. public meeting. Yes. Yes, yes a okay. public meeting. But you, and you'll take care of warning them, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Brittany will do that. Yeah. Okay. I have a similar question. Great. How do you estimate the grand list? Because it always seems to me when I first started on this board that it's a major, major guess and that the, the rate that's put out at the vote is an estimate and it can't really be finalized until the grand list is known. Am I right? I think you're right, yes. The, but there is, there's, uh, the, there's a history, there's, the grand list is updated uh, all the time, um, and we have a history of those updates. So all we're going to do is is look and see. And on November fifteenth, you know, four months into the fiscal year, what portion of the increase? I'm assuming it increases every year. We interpolate it out, and we're just going to interpolate it out and say, on average, okay. in the last four years, it went up another seven and a half percent. Yeah. Okay. That's what we're going to do. It'll be very simple. Okay. The the, the uh, the part that isn't simple is making sure that we exclude, that we do the exclusions correctly, because the tax rate isn't based on the grand list. It's based on the grand list minus the exemptions. And there's a formula for doing that. And the people who are doing the formula have only done it once because the people who used to do it are no longer on the staff. Gotcha. So I just want to make sure we, because that could be a, I don't want, you know, that could change the tax rate more than the budget could change yeah. the tax rate if we get the exemptions wrong. So that's my only thing. We've never done that before. We've okay. just, we've, this has never been done, right? So I just want to make sure that we get that correctly. If we don't, we can still talk about the budget the way we always talked about yeah. the budget. But we'd really like to start the discussion throughout by saying, 
this is the effect of the tax rate. Because what otherwise what happens is what's happened, which mm -hmm. is that we all agree on 2.9%, and then all of a sudden it goes up by 9 the taxes go way out of, yeah. because of all the other stuff. So that's what we're going to, but that's how we're going to do it, Bill. And we just all have mm -hmm. to understand that it's, you know, there's nothing, we can't do better than that. Yeah. It's, 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 it is what it is. Uh, any other? Trustees, any other oh, questions I'll on process? Answer. Thank you. <laughs> yes, thank yeah, you. Very thank much. You. Thank you, Jill. Tom, are you comfortable? Hey, Jill. I mean, yes, I know you've formulated this, but is, have I said anything out of it in school? I don't think so. Okay. Yes, yes. Jill? Yes, you do. You okay? I'm good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Thank you, guys. Thank I appreciate you. that. Yeah. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Thanks. Very good. Uh, next item on the agenda is the Investment Advisory Committee report. Okay. I'm going Jill. to share my screen. So this, the Investment Advisory Committee comes to you each quarter to report on the uh, Rockefeller Endowment Fund. And we report on how the, uh, how the equities and the bonds that the fund invests in have performed against the market. And we've chosen indexes that reflect stocks or bonds. And what we will report to you is that the value of these funds has have gone down since June. Um, in total, our, we've gone down by 4.5% since June. That's just as the market, because we are invested in these funds, which are kind of the average of the marketplace. So we've been doing, okay, there's no reason to change the allocation of the funds or the choice of the funds is what we believe and we advise you. Mm -hmm. But I thought that you might like to see something else. Hmm. So if I, um, I'll stop sharing and share a different screen. Uh, this is the performance of the fund since we started. So we invested the money in these Vanguard funds back in 2017. Hmm. And you can see by tracing the blue line along that uh, the value of our funds has increased and now decreased. And it, it looks like we're just about back to the place we were. <laughs> but we over these years, we've withdrawn $570,000. Oh, okay. So I think we've done okay, really. Yeah. Even though um, you might be panicking at the moment. We've taken money out to fund the um, equivalent property taxes each year. And we had that special withdrawal of $200,000 a couple of years ago. So we're back to square one. And um, hopefully the market will go up and these funds will go up with it. Awesome. Thank you, Any Joe. Questions? Yeah. Questions, trustees? Questions, audience? <laughs> OK. Fantastic. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate the update. Thank you. Thank you. OK. Uh, Next item under new business is uh, town manager goals and objectives. Um, so as you know, we are on the hunt for a new town manager. Um, and there was a thought that one of the ways that we can be helpful, um, sort of get organized um, with a new town manager is to create a list of goals and objectives. This is um, an idea that Tom actually gave me about like when the new town manager comes in, just being very clear about expectations with each other and sort of what our what our priorities are um, so that it just helps with communication. Um, he is also working with Brittany is working on putting together a binder of everything, everything, everything that mm -hmm. uh, the new town manager will need to know on day one, whether it's contact information, personnel policy, ordinances. Um, if you, anybody here thinks of anything else to add in there um, so that on the first couple of months when they don't know anything or they don't know what they don't know so they don't even know to ask a lot of this will just be provided for them um, and certainly they can follow up with with anybody with questions but we really want this next person to hit the ground running to really have a full understanding so that um, so that we can just get them set for success so the idea with this is is sort of um, having these goals and objectives uh, that are very broad so not like we want to buy five new laptops. It's not that sort of thing. It's more about these are the objectives that we want you working on on a regular basis um, and sort of how we expect for you to be managing the town, the staff, 
how we expect you to be doing sort of continuing education, not only for yourself, but for um, staff as well. Um, how we want to be interacting as boards. Um, the the uh, select board also has this. Um, I've met with Stephen in the um, zoning office um, and started talking to him about what he wants to include on here. Um, Joe uh, Swanson has been talking to Robbie and David about the emergency services. You'll notice that's not in here. Um, he's working on that so that we can add that in. So this is really a first draft, um, and I wanted to get from everybody what your thoughts on it, on it were, um, what other things do you think that we should be including, um, if there's things in here that you think absolutely we should not, um, and all you know, we'll, we will um, update this again next month, so gather everything, update it, um, and then certainly once the new town manager starts, we will meet with that person, and there will probably be changes then because they have different ideas and different strengths. Um, but that means that once this becomes a final document, um, this will allow the boards, this will allow the public to know um, in a very transparent way what our priorities are, that the select boards, the staff, the town manager are all on the same page about what we should be doing. Um, and then it allows check-ins um, so that we can say, hey, this is, we talked about this, this is one of the goals where is the town on that um and and i think it will just help the communication um a lot better and and just and make it easier for everybody to know what's happening at any given time so our, our action item to review this and provide comments so we can discuss it now yeah i mean if you have anything right now um any high level ideas if you want to give it to me later and we'll obviously look at this again next month and this is also public forum, you know, we want to get input from anybody in the public that wants to give us their ideas. I think it's extremely comprehensive. Thank you. And I think it's terrific. And I think, uh, I think also if we have somebody who can do all of these things. <laughs> <laughs> Has to all be done within the first six months. Done. <laughs> it's quite a load. But it's, it's a really good guidepost. Uh, uh, so I, I have no other than to say that I think you did a good job. And I've given a copy to Tom. Tom's going to give me his feedback. Yeah, With no, all that free time that he has. I don't need to do it at this meeting. I have no. added okay. a few things. Okay. Uh, we can follow up. And I, and I will say that you may want to change the year on this. Uh, oh, well, this is, yeah. yes. Because <laughs> it, it all has to be done. It's, it's very, uh, it's very, it's extensive. It's yeah. a lot of work. You may want to consider prioritizing within the category. Okay. Yeah, but we can talk. About yeah. That time. Yeah. That's a good point. Okay, so if everybody, so if this is your homework, then folks, yes. <laughs> send it to me. Um, and the select board is also going to be looking at this, and we'll just put it all and talk about it next month unless anybody has anything they want to share right so now. The, the public gets a chance to look at this how do we do that right now and right here this is okay. why we're having a public Maybe meeting sure. yeah. Um, yeah. it is available online it is That's available in the packet people can access it at any time on the talent side, on the it is it's in the packet which is available online very at all good. times using this link which we've turned into a skew so make it very comprehensive um, so we'll talk about it again next month. Anything else on this topic? Okay, next, uh, other business, executive session. Tom wanted to give us an- Before we go into that, yes. I noticed that the appropriate form was signed- Oh, did we sign the wrong one? Yeah, you, you had the one with the underlying- Oh, okay. The Thank you. That's yeah. definitely really <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, oh, I've got it. No? Here. I don't care. Nine. Here. Sign that one. Thank you, Tom. Keeping us honest. Uh, you got it? There it is. Uh, while you're doing that, uh, I would accept a motion to go into executive session as allowed by 1 VSA 313. 
Good. So moved. Uh, is there a second? I can second. Seconded by Brenda. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any aye. opposed? Nay. Motion passes. Uh, motion carries. We will now be going into executive session. Okay, next item on uh, the agenda is approval of minutes. Jeffrey? Uh, I actually have a correction to make. Oh, oh, no. It's been a long time. But. I've already read you. Could have. So, let's see. On page uh, 33, request to remove tree at 26 Pleasant Street. It's, it's not. Mr. McCoy, M-C-C-O-Y. It's Mr. McCahey, spelled M-C-C-O-U-G-H-E-Y. M-C, capital C, O-U-G-H-E-Y. Nice. But quick, spell Brittany's last name. <laughs> Got you. I can't do this. I can't Anyway, that, that's all I, I had for that. I thought, it was, I thought minutes were very well done, Brittany. Thanks. Uh, I would accept a motion to approve the minutes. I, I, would, I, would, okay. I would make that motion to okay. approve both sets of minutes with that one correction. Okay. Brenda seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Uh, anything else this evening? Okay. I move to adjourn. I second. second. Oh, Brenda seconds. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. <laughs> Thank you all.